people think that math anxiety is something that only affects people who are not good at math. So that's the stereotype. Oh, you're not good at math. You must have math anxiety. That's not true. That is definitely not true. Sure, there are a lot of people who struggle with mathematics and they're taking you know, basic math classes or they're learning very basic mathematics and they struggle with math anxiety and they blame it on that. And, and that's true, but it affects people at all levels and it can just happen. You know, you can be taking your math classes, you can be doing really well and you encounter a new class with a new teacher, a new subject, and boom, you fall apart. So it happens to people for many reasons. I think the main reason for math anxiety is people encounter something that is difficult, but not just difficult, more difficult than something they've previously learned. So maybe you, you make it through algebra, you make it through calculus, and you get to proof writing. That's a good example. Proof writing is one that I think a lot of people have a hard time with. In proof writing, mathematics goes from algorithmic, you know, following steps to a little bit more thoughtful. You're still following steps, but it's a little bit different. It's not just like memorization. You really have to think about what's happening in the problem. You have to think about what the problem is saying and what you know about what it's saying. So for example, if you have a function and it's uniformly continuous, you have to know what that means. You have to know the definition. You have to know what that implies in terms of continuity and other things. So you have to have a lot of knowledge on that specific thing. And then you have to know how to apply it and how to express your thoughts mathematically in a way that's very different from what you've learned before. So that type of thing creates math anxiety, but it happens at all levels, right? It happens to beginners too. And typically when you hear about math anxiety, it's typically people who are just trying to get through the basic math. You know, they can't solve an equation. They don't understand logarithms. They can't graph a circle and everyone else seems to get it and they can't. And I think it stems from frustration, from trying really hard and not being able to get where you want to go, not getting it. You know, no matter how hard you try, you, you just don't get it. And I'm here to tell you it's normal. It, it, it's a normal thing. Math anxiety, I think, is something that in some sense we all have to deal with when we're learning math. Right? It just, it just affects people at different levels because certain people are better at dealing with that. Certain people are better at dealing with that specific type of adversity right? because people are different. We all have different strengths and weaknesses. Some people are good at you know, physical things. Some people are good at you know, climbing mountains or whatever. People have different strengths and weaknesses naturally. And I think certain people, when they see mathematics, they just get really frustrated and they don't know how to approach it and they try and try and try and they just don't get it. So how do you get better at, at math when you have math anxiety? How do you, how do you get over it? I think, I think one thing you can do is take a step back and realize that it's not the end of the world if you don't get it. So one of the things that people who have math anxiety have is they have this like huge fear of failure and that's what creates the anxiety, right? Typically it's test anxiety because at least in the U S in most classes, you know, in college or high school, tests are a big part of your grade. So test anxiety is typically the biggest problem because if you can't pass your tests, no matter how good you are at math at home, when you have your books in front of you, you're not going to do well, right? You have to be able to succeed in an environment where you don't have resources. So how do you do that? How do you get beyond that? Well, again, step one is to realize that you know, math isn't everything. It's not going to be the end of the world if you fail. And once you realize that, it's going to just take some of the pressure off. This is one of the reasons, too, that a lot of people don't have math anxiety for a long time. And then all of a sudden they have it. Because think about this. 
if you're the type of person who's really good at math and you're taking your classes and you're doing really, really well, and let's even say you've, you've gotten through proof writing, then all of a sudden you encounter some new beast. Let's just use measure theory or real analysis, graduate level real analysis. That's really hard. That's going to be harder than anything you've seen before. And so at that point, you might start getting math anxiety. You'll, you'll, you'll see this subject, you'll see these theorems, you'll see these proofs and they're terse. And you're going to say, ah, this is just so hard. I don't get it. I just can't wrap my head around it. And up until now, you've been successful. You've been a math rock star. You know, you've been really good at math. You've gotten A's. So your confidence is really high. You think that, oh, I'm really good at math. I should be able to get this. I should be able to understand. Then all of a sudden you don't. That's what starts creating that anxiety. And then you start doubting yourself. You start doubting your abilities. These people who are really good at math and they encounter new math and they get stuck and they get math anxiety, it's because they're used to being successful and because they haven't had that adversity yet, you know, that they get this anxiety. You might say they haven't had that adversity yet. They've made it that far in math. Yeah, but people learn math at different levels. You know, some people have a really a much easier time than other people learning math when they first start. I think that everyone gets to a level where it's really hard for everyone. I think, and I think that's a measure theory is a good example. Graduate level math is a good example of where it doesn't matter how smart you are, you're still going to have to work really, really hard. So that's, I think, a good example of math anxiety at a higher level. So if you're in graduate school, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's extremely tough. But most of you aren't. Most of you are suffering from maybe minor math anxiety or maybe math anxiety in the lower level classes. So again, step one, remind yourself that it's not the end of the world if you don't pass your test. I actually used to do this. So I remember, I remember studying for my college algebra final exam and I didn't understand logarithms. So I remember you know, studying, doing my best, taking the test. And I remember when I took the test, I got in the car and I remember where I was on the highway driving home thinking to myself, I didn't study hard enough. I failed this test, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. So that's a pretty good strategy. You can, you can tell yourself, you know, you, you, you work really hard for the test. You give it your best. As soon as you walk out of that testing environment, try to cool down, right? Remind yourself that it's not everything in your life, right? Grades aren't everything. Grades do matter. They matter to a huge extent. I've seen decisions made and I've seen people's lives affected in minor ways and sometimes in big ways because of grades. So grades do matter. But at the end of the day, there's things more important than grades, right? Your health, you're alive, all that stuff. So try to tone it down. Realize that it's not everything. Try to like just chill, right? Relax. There's more important things in life. And I think that's, that's the big, big first step to math anxiety, to reducing it. The second thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're prepared. So by prepared, I don't mean just, oh, you understand everything because it's easy for me to say that. But how do you know that you understand? Most people don't know what they actually know and they don't know how to determine what they actually know. So to determine what you actually know in any situation for mathematics, it's really easy, but it's also really hard. You basically want to make sure that you can do every single homework problem, every example from your in-class notes, cold, without looking at any resources. You want to be able to reproduce all of it. If you can reproduce all of your homework and all of the examples from your in-class notes, chances are you're going to pass the class. And chances are you're going to get an A. And there is a chance that you'll get a 100% on the exam. The, the worst situation is when you're in a class and you do that and then you take a test and then the test is completely different from what you studied. That's, that's very rare. Okay. That's very rare. What will happen is in certain higher level math classes, you'll do that and you're going to have a really hard time because it's really hard to do that. Right? It's, it's easier said than done. It takes a huge time commitment, but you're going to take the test and the questions will all be slightly different. And that's when your knowledge is really being tested because you know, you'll get your test back and you'll say, well, none of these were homework questions. None of these were in our notes, but then you'll look at the solutions and you'll, and you'll see, oh, 
that little technique that was used in this homework problem is being used on this exam problem. And so that's how you start to relate and piece things together. And so you have to actually understand. You have to actually understand what you're doing, not just memorize all the homework and memorize all the examples from your notes. You actually have to understand how to solve those problems. The first time this happened to me was, I think it was my first advanced calculus exam. So undergraduate real analysis, we had a test and I think I got like, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like an 19 or 21 out of 30 points. So it was pretty bad, but there was a curve. So I ended up getting like an A minus. And I think there was like six or seven questions and I got a few of them wrong and I got some partial credit. And I remember thinking, oh, when I saw the solutions, this was so easy. It's because I wasn't ready, right? I, I, I got used to trying to memorize so many things instead of understanding things. So make sure you're ready, right? Make sure you can do all of the homework cold, go over all of the examples from your notes cold, without any resources. And if you can do that, if you can do that, you're going to do well in your math classes. You're, you're going to do well. The thing is, most people don't do that. And it's not because they're lazy. It's because it just takes so much time, right? It just takes so much time. You know, the word lazy is often thrown around as, you know, oh, you know, mathematicians are lazy. That's why they use so many, you know, symbols and little um, you know, abbreviations like WRT with respect to, and I'm, I'm often guilty of saying that too, but convenient is perhaps the right word, right? We all like to work hard and succeed, but you know, working too hard is not fun, <laughs> so, right? Sometimes it's not fun, especially if you have to do math for like extended periods of time. You know, it, it doesn't matter how much you like math. Sometimes you have to do a lot of math and it's forced on you, especially in, in a school setting, if you're in college or high school. So, you know, getting through that, becoming stronger and learning how to get ready, you know, making sure you can do everything cold, I think is, is the right approach to defeating math anxiety. So again, first step, make sure that, you know, you realize it's not the biggest thing in the world. And secondly, be ready, right? Be ready for those exams, be ready for those situations. Make sure you know everything. Now it gets worse. It, it does get worse. When you if you, if and when you go to higher level math, higher level math, like graduate school, or if and when you get a really hard teacher as an undergrad, this is, I mean, and I mean, when I mean hard, really hard, I mean, really, really hard, you get curveballs and stuff on your tests. And so if you're in that situation, what you want to do is you want to start collecting math books. <laughs> That's what I did, right? And you want to not only go over everything in your notes and know it cold, not only do all of your homework and be able to do it cold with no resources, right? Just you, your pencil and a piece of paper, but you want to start doing problems from other books and making sure you know how to do those. And that just takes, that just takes a ridiculous amount of time. And a lot of people will, will respond to my statement, or at least they'll think of it mentally. They'll think, well, that's not reasonable. I just don't have the time. And, and that's fine. You can think that you, they're your thoughts and it's, it's an okay uh, response, but realize it's not going to help you. It's, it's not going to actually help you succeed, right? And we, we, all, we all do that with things in life. You know, you, you, there's something you want to do and you say, oh, I just don't have the time. And you brush it off and you say, well, I'm not going to do it because I don't have the time to learn X, Y, Z. I don't have the time to take on this new project. Oh, I don't have time to learn discrete mathematics. I don't have time to study for my test. That's fine. You cannot have time, but then you're going to fail. And that's, that's the hard part about it. I, I think probably the worst thing about mathematics, and this has to do with math anxiety, is that it takes so much time. So if you don't have a lot of time in your life for it, you're going to struggle, you know, progressing. And especially in a school environment where time is everything because, you know, you're supposed to learn all this material and you have, you know, the short amount of time. So, so here in the U.S. we have semesters, which I believe are usually like 15 to 18 weeks. We have quarters, which are like 12 weeks, depending on where you live in the U.S. And it's not a lot of time to learn some of these subjects. So, you know, you, you get a book, you know, you're, you're thrown into a classroom, you have, you have these tests you have to take, and, you know, it's like game on. You got to perform, you know, and you have only so much time. And, and that's tough for people. And that creates math anxiety. You know, you think, oh, I have a test in two weeks. I haven't studied. I can't get through the first few homework problems. So it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. So you have to get past that, right? You just have to get past it be ready 
and at the same time, you know, realize it's not the end of the world. So study hard, but at the same time, tell yourself it's not everything. And, that, and that's a hard thing to do. It's a hard balance to find. You know, it's like this balance of how much do you care? You have to care enough to do well, right? But you don't want to care too much because you don't want to stress yourself out. So it's just like the right amount of caring. And, that, and that's a good skill to have that will help you in life too. You know, if you have a job and you're being asked to do something at your job that you don't want to do, but at the same time you want to do a good job, you have to care enough to do a good job because it's your job. You're getting paid. People are depending on you. you know, whatever it is you're doing, there's probably people that depend on you, whether they be customers or whether they be coworkers or clients, whatever. Right? These people depend on you to do a good job. So you want to do a good job, right? You want to do the best job you can. But at the same time, you don't want to care too much to the point where it stresses you out. So always just do your best. Anyways, kind of a random video. Hopefully it's been helpful to someone out there. If you want to learn math, I have courses there on my website, mathsorcerer.com. So check them out. Also, I have a Patreon. Check it out, Math Sorcerer. And an Instagram, The Real Math Sorcerer, if you use Instagram. And if you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button today. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck. Go do some math.